Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to look at the internal structure of the internet. Now there are end, end systems which are your laptops, computers, your phones which want to connect to the internet and they do so via ISPs or internet service providers. Now these internet service providers could be at the residential level, they could be at the organization or the company level and as well as, well as in the university level. Now these access points or no, sorry the access ISPs need to connect uh, to each other so that packets from one host can travel to the other host in the internet. Now these connections as you can see <clears throat> can result in a network that is very complex and the evolution of these uh, networks and these connections is driven, is driven by economics and national policies. So the internet is actually a network of networks and this connection between the different networks is pretty complex and this results in a large and complex network. So let's take a step-by-step -step approach to understand how the internet has evolved. So let's first consider this question. There are millions of access ISPs all over the world. Now these access ISPs have to be able to talk to each other or send packets to each other. So one way to connect all these ISPs is to connect each ISP to every other ISP in the world. So here all these, there, as you can see there are multiple ISPs in this figure and if each of these ISPs is, is connected to every other ISPs then you can figure out that there are a large number of such connections. In fact they have, if there are n ISPs they are O of n square connections. If you are not familiar with algorithmic notation you can think of <clears throat> in this way. The n ISPs, each of them is connected to every other ISPs. So each ISP is connected to n minus 1 ISPs and then there are n ISPs in all. So in all there are n times n minus 1 <clears throat> connections. So there are a lot of connections. This is pretty complex and hard to, hard to achieve. So what we can do is every ISP can connect to a global transit ISPs. Now the customers and provider ISPs have some economic agreement with each other to enable this. So there is a global ISP and then the different access ISPs connect to this global ISP. Now if there is a single global ISP and it's making profit then there will be multiple other global ISPs as well because all of them want to have a share of the pie. So there are multiple global ISPs and each uh, access ISP is connected to one of these global ISPs. The next question is these global ISPs now need to be able to talk to each other. For example, if somebody connected to this access ISP wants to connect, talk to the access ISP over here, which is shown by mouse, ISP A and ISP B have to be connected to each other. So the way this kind of interconnection works is by using peering links. So the red links on this on this on the slide are called peering links. The the peering links are managed by are governed by some kind of economic agreements uh, relating to how much traffic these global ISPs are willing to share for one another. It, apart from this, there are also internet exchange points where <laughs> these global uh, ISPs meet and they exchange network traffic. So these, apart from having direct peering links as, sh as I shown by the, <clears throat> the places where my mouse is moving, there are also these internet exchange points. These internet exchange points are places where these different global ISPs meet and exchange packets. So that is also, also driven by economic uh, agreement. Apart from that, some access ISPs may be located in remote areas. They may not be able to directly connect to the global ISPs. This gives rise and monetary incentive to developing a regional uh, network or regional ISP which connects to a bunch of these <coughs> local ISPs. These, the regional ISP is then connected to the global ISP. So the regional ISP actually acts as a connection between the, the access ISP and the global ISP because the, the, uh, the access ISPs may not, be may not be able to directly connect to the global ISP. So, the, so as you can see the, the evolution of the internet or the structure of the internet is pretty complex and it's just going to get a little more complex. Now there are a bunch of content providers for example Google, Ma Microsoft, Facebook, Akamai and they would want their customers to to be a, to access the, their products very easily. So for to uh, to uh, to enable this, they are 
they also build their own networks and they bring <coughs> and bring services and the goal is to bring the content closer to the end users so there these are called uh, content providers and they sometimes build networks of their own for example google microsoft and akamai have their own networks so uh, so this global this content provider network is actually an overlay on top of each of these uh, different global isps so in a nutshell, if you want to understand the high-level picture, what we have is at the at the bottom level, we have the access ISPs, which can be directly connected to a tier one or a global ISP, or they can also be connected to the regional ISP. Some of the access uh, uh, ISPs can also be connected to the internet exchange points. The tier one ISPs or the global ISPs need to exchange uh, traffic with each other, which they do so using peer link link peering links or they do so using the internet exchange points. <laughs> As we mentioned, some of these access ISPs cannot be directly connected to a tier one ISP or global ISP, so they are connected to a regional ISP. These regional ISPs are then connected to the tier one uh, ISP directly or through internet exchange points. In addition to this, there are content providers like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, and there are a bunch of others who want who want services and the con their content to be close to the user as close to the user as possible so that the user gets better performance so they build their own networks and these are con content provider networks so these are also a part of the internet so the entire structure of the internet in a very abstract manner is represented by this by this graph over here okay. and with that i'll end this lecture and before we just go, I just want you to give a picture, a high level picture of a tier one ISP example sprint, where this is <clears throat> this is actually a map of sprint. And if we, if we actually zoom out on one or zoom in on one of these uh, points of presence, you will see that there are a lot of peering agreements and a lot of routers there. With, like, with this, I'll end this lecture and uh, we will continue the next one. Thank you.